Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. This coal. I've had it a week now. Can't seem to shake it. It's getting me down. Now, what's his name here? Uh, Boxdale? Yeah. No, not yet. Oh. Well, I'll be against the wall with Asher. Well, when he comes in, I'll send him over. Yeah. See you later, Ben. All right. What do you say, Ben? Uh, not much tonight. How's the coal? Oh, it's the same. Just trying to keep my head clear. This thing does pretty well. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call up a number, the name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice. So do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. All the way to the end of the stage, boys. That's it. Keep moving right across. Now turn and face the screen. Heads up, eyes straight ahead, hands out of your pockets. Step out to the circle when I call your name. Okay, number one, John Carlisle, armed robbery. Where do you live, John? 1145 Sherman Street. What is that? Rooming house, apartment, motel, what? An apartment. Where are you from, John? Here, I lived here all my life. A little straighter, son. Keep your head up. That's right. What do you do? Electric. I'm an electrician. Where do you work? No place right now. Anyone arrested with you? Yeah. Well, who? A couple of guys, Quinn Levin and Steele. Howard Quinn Levin and Robert Steele? Yeah. Uh, 17 and 18. They friends of yours, John? No, not particularly. They have the same address on Sherman Street as you gave. We live in the same apartment, but we weren't very friendly. You drive a car? Yeah, 49 Merck. Sedan, coupe, what? Great sedan. Okay, step back. Number two, Claire Burness, burglary. Over to the circle, Claire. Hey, uh, uh, oh, oh, what was that? Step over to the circle, Claire. You've done this before. Come on, come on. <laughs> Where do you I'm live? Sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Talk right out. Big room. Everybody wants to hear you. You live someplace, don't you? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. I'm no big. I, I live at the Seacoast Hotel. Well, oh, got me a nice 75 cent room there. It's over on Arapahoe and 27. Uh, but, of course, the plumbing... How long you live there, Claire? Uh, oh, three. Oh, it's nice. It's Where'd nice. you live before that? Well, across the street. Well, what address? Uh, it's 2214 North, 27. My wife still lives there. <laughs> We're breaking up. Sorry to hear that. What's your business, Claire? What do you do for a living? Oh, nothing. Stand up there. You own a car? Oh, me, oh no, 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 no. I don't own a car. I, I don't know how to drive. <laughs> Any weapons when you're arrested? No, 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 nothing like that. What about the 22 automatic? That's a weapon, Claire. No, no, no. They, they, they got it all. I just found that thing. A 22's no weapon. Since when? Well, I found it in the garbage can when I was out walking. I was going to make a cigarette lighter out of it. Oh, such a little gun. <laughs> it looked nice on my coffee table. That's it was yeah. fully loaded when the officers took it from you. Was that gun loaded? Honest. That's what the officer's report says right here. Well, are you sure about that? Yeah. Well, I wonder if I could just see that thing. Would you say well, stay there. Oh. <laughs> well, I just wanted to see it. That's all. Oh, man has Get to... back there. Now, go on. Number Leaving. three, Alvin I think I'll go Richards, home, Dr. Grant Up and hit the sack. Up to Night. the circle, Night. Alvin. Night. Talk in a good, loud voice. Where do you live, Alvin? Ben, 
Mrs. Pete. <coughs> Sorry to wake you. Cold any better? <coughs> About the same. <coughs> what time is it? Oh, 5.30. Ben, something's come up. Oh, uh, what? You know Beth Leonard, the singer? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, wait. Uh, nightclub singer? Yeah. Somebody robbed and killed her husband. Okay. Pick me up. Hi. Hi, Ben. Hi. He's over here. Beaten to death. Looks like somebody killed him in a car and dumped him off here. Officers Gerard and Johnston found the body. Uh, Complaint? No. Routine patrol. Did they see anything? No, they're covering the ground now. Uh. Oh, uh, hi, Ben. Uh, hello, Doc. Uh, somebody sure gave him a working over. Yeah. Hasn't been dead more than a half hour, Ben. Nothing more I can do until we get him downtown. Okay, wrap it up. All right, Ben. Okay, boys, take him away. No weapon around? Nothing. Who identified him? No one, yes. Found this empty billfold in the alley. Had his name and driver's license. No money. Now, let me see that. Hmm. Rip part way open. Yeah. Watch and ring missing, too. Henry Leonard, huh? 22161 Cherry Hills Drive. It's about six blocks away. Anybody talk to Mrs. Leonard yet? Uh, yeah, Asher went over and got her. She's over there in the car. Okay. Ever hear Beth Leonard sing? No. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have it then. She sure won't have anything to sing about tonight. No, not much. Hello, Ben. Hi. Mrs. Leonard. Yes? This is Lieutenant Guthrie. How do you do? Hello. Uh, did you see... Yes, I saw him. That's Hank, all right. Or what's left of him. I don't think I'm going to be able to... Oh, sure. I got it. Yeah, Ben. Uh, see if Dr. Gerson's still here. All right. singing at the Deauville now, and Hank came by tonight for the last show. We closed about two, and then we had something to eat. Then we went out to the house. Mm-hmm. And what time was that? Oh, about 3.30, I guess. Four o'clock. Go on. Well, that's all. Hank left about four. We talked a while at the house, and then he left. Hank didn't live here. He's been in Florida the last two years. He just came in town Sunday night. We're separating. Mm, I see. Uh, when he left you at the house this morning, where was he going? Back to his hotel, the Delvey. Uh, was he driving? No. I offered him the car, but he said he'd rather walk. Why would anybody kill Hank? We're pretty sure the motive was robbery, Mrs. Lyon. Robbery? Yes, there was no watch or ring on the body, and his wallet had been empty. Oh, he had a beautiful watch. Just a beautiful watch that he loved very much. Can you describe it? It had Roman numerals and a white gold case. It was a Gerard. Any engraving on it? His initials, H-A-L. H-A-L. Don't happen to remember where he bought it, do you? I bought it for him on his birthday four years ago. It was the Wentz Jewelry Company. Any other valuables he might have had on him, Mrs. Leonard? Just his ring. It was a plain gold wedding band. He still wore it. Anything outstanding about the ring? Engraving? No. Okay. Anything else? No. May I have a cigarette? Oh, sure. Yeah. Thank you. We uh, want to cover every possibility, Mrs. Leonard. Uh, can you think of anyone who might have had reason to want to kill your husband? No. Did he have any enemies in town? No. Why? The way it looks now, somebody just waylaid him and robbed him and killed him. But it's pretty far from your house to his hotel, Mrs. Lennon. Almost 20 blocks. Well, I can explain that. Hank said he felt like walking. He was in town to talk about our divorce. I've been thinking of marrying someone else. I see. And that's why he met you at the Doville? Yes, to straighten out some things. It was beginning to drizzle when he left. I looked out the window and watched him go down the street. He looked kind of lonely. Well, 
What about the weapon, Doc? Mm, blunt instrument is about the best we can do for you, Ben. Any way you can narrow it down? I don't know. Maybe something to this. It just came from the crime lab. Probably a copy on your desk now. I found some flakes in the wound. A specimen I sent to the lab's been analyzed. On the spectrograph, they found out it was a substance called ANSYS. Corrosive protective product made by Union Petroleum. Uh, what's it used for? Well, to spray tools and metal that might be out in the weather a lot. Like in a filling station. A lot of tools in the new cars have it. Well, that might help. You pick up anything out there? No, nothing. No tire marks, no footprints. Mm -hmm. Toughy, huh? Yeah, looks like it. Well, somebody's car might have a little blood on it. Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. One shot detail has the watch the and ring on the hot list. Oh. That's about all we have to work right. on now. Yeah. yeah. A feel, Ben. Oh. Thanks. Guthrie. Ben, I'm at 22178 Cherry Hills Place across from Beth Leonard's house, about six houses down. 22178? Yeah. What's up? Checking the story about Leonard walking home. Lady here, uh, uh, Mrs. Sheridan, saw somebody pick him up when he left the house. Does she know who it is? Well, she says it looked like Beth Leonard's boyfriend, James Brewer. Okay, we'll check it out. Backing up the great CBS radio news team on election night will be Univax, the electronic brain. It'll be operating for the first time to bring you faster, more accurate, more complete election night totals. On November 4th, make CBS Radio your election headquarters to hear the trends, the color, and the results. You'll hear Edward R. Murrow, Lowell Thomas, and the rest of the same great CBS Radio team that made convention reporting history earlier this year. Ah, that's crazy. I was right here in bed. Any way you can prove that, Mr. Brewer? Prove I was in bed? Lord, no, I was here, that's all. I was home and in bed by 11 last night. I don't quite understand why you're here. Just checking. You drive a 51 Cadillac sedan? That's right. Black? Mm-hmm. This witness said it was your car. Well, a lot of people have cars like that. It wasn't mine. Well, now, I understand we have to look into all these things. Sure, I understand. You want to come in here? Yeah. Where were you last night before you came home? Working. I own a club out on Lincoln Highway. Anybody there see you leave? Sure. Charlie Monroe, my manager. And you came right home, went to bed? Yeah. You knew Henry Leonard? Sure. I've known him 10 or 12 years. Knew him before he married Beth. Were you on good terms with him? What do you mean? I... Oh, yeah, I think so. As good terms as you can be with a husband of the woman you're going to marry. Look... Beth and Hank broke up two years ago. They never could work things out. Beth asked Hank to come back in town, talk about a divorce. That's why he was here. Beth and I wanted to get married. Yeah. Did you see him while he was in town? Yeah, Sunday night. We all had dinner here. Did you talk about the divorce? Yeah. Hank said it was all right with him if that's what Beth wanted. Sunday the only time you saw him? That's right. I know you have to look into all sorts of things, but I didn't kill him if that's what you're driving at. You own a raincoat, Mr. Brewer? Sure. I'd like to see it. I sent it to the cleaners a couple days ago. You remember what cleaners? Windsor. Why? Just want to look at it. Now, listen, you two. I'm no criminal. I have no record. I've never been in trouble with the law. You have no reason to inquire into my personal life and the things I do. I've been pretty nice to you up to now, but I won't stand for this. I have a lawyer who might be able to make something out of your accusations. Uh, we aren't making any accusations, Mr. Brewer. Just looking for the facts. Well, look for them someplace else. This is my home, and until you have a warrant or something, you have no right to come Don't here. Don't ever tell a police officer working on a homicide that he has no right to make inquiries. We'll contact you later. What do you think, Ben? Pretty big guy. Yeah. Hi. His car's in the garage, Ben. You got a chance to look at it? Yeah. The jack handle's missing. Uh, uh, Miss Leonard? Yeah, that's right. Police. Oh, but, oh please. Oh, certainly. Well, she's just finishing up now. Uh, can you wait? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, 
how about the bar? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, because you've all asked for it, here it is again, your favorite and mine. This lovely day will lengthen into evening. We'll say goodbye to all we've ever had. Alone, where we have walked together. Kid has a record on that one. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Did you see this? Huh? What? Cover $10 per person. Mm. Yeah. Oh, here she comes. Yeah. Hello, Lieutenant. Hello. I hate to bother you again, Miss Leonard, but uh, we have to talk to you. Again? I'm sorry, Miss Leonard, but it's necessary. Well, not here. We can use Mr. Hanson's office. home. I told you that before. Well, we know. Well, was there any trouble about the divorce? No, no trouble at all. Hank was very sweet about it. Had he taken any legal action? He was going to see a lawyer this morning. Uh, do you know if Mr. Brewer and your husband had any words about this divorce situation? No, no. Hank and I've been separated for such a long time. No, Mr. Brewer told me not to answer any more questions. Well, I wish he hadn't told you that, Mrs. Lyon. He said you had no right to annoy me or him. I think he's right. You said you thought my husband had been robbed and killed. What are you trying to find out now? Mr. Brewer's no killer or thief. I'm certainly not. Well, we have to check out everything. We want to find out who killed your husband, that's all, Mrs. Leonard. A witness claims she saw your husband get into a car like the one Mr. Brewer drives. She says Mr. Brewer was driving it. We're here to find out if you know anything about that. I don't know anything about it, and I don't think I'll answer any more questions. Are you sure we should look at it differently, Mrs. Lennon? I told you, no more. Absolutely. Hello? Lieutenant. Thanks. Guthrie? It's me, Ben. Brewer hasn't been able to explain the jack handle missing from his car. We have him here still talking to him. But it may not be Brewer. Huh? Asher just called in. A big guy just pawned the watch. It was taken from Leonard's body. Where? Bob Bomash's pawn shop, 18th and Curtis. We'll meet him there. There they 
there, Sasha. Yeah. Oh, hi, Ben. Hi. 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 He left the shop about four minutes ago. Bomash gave me a pretty good description. 6'2", brown suit, 190, no hat. He must be around here somewhere. Yeah, what's the story? Well, the pawn shop detail was in Bomash's place this morning. It was still fresh in Bomash's mind when the suspect came in. He signed the buy book, Harry Long. Uh, here's the watch. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Movement and case numbers check out? Yeah. Well, this puts Brewer in the clear, huh, Ben? Yeah. Now we have to get this one. How do you want to work it, Ben? We'll lay it out every intersection for six blocks, every alley. Now, let's get some more cars down here. This sounds like our boy, and I want him. Unit 33K, code one. Been an hour now, Ben. I know. He's in the area somewhere. He could be in any one of those stores. Might live around here, too. 66 at 205 at 617 Manning. See the woman? I'll check in. Yeah. 13K to unit 17K. Come in. 17K to 13K. Go ahead, Ben. You do any good yet? Nothing, Ben. I'll check it around. Ben? Hmm? Going into market town with the packages, huh? That's the description. Just spotted man answering description of suspect. Now entering southeast entrance of market town. Call it out. Cover every entrance, every street. Pete and I are going after him. Market town, Roger. Let's go. Uh, pardon me, please. Pardon. Sorry. Sorry. Pardon me. He's going for the parking lot. Yeah, come on. Ben, that 49 caddy's his. Yeah. Mr. Long? Huh? Your name Harry Long? No, you got the wrong fellow, mister. Police officers. Now, what is this? This your car? Well, yes. Hey, listen, uh, I... We better go where we can talk. Come on. What about it? You pawned this watch a few minutes ago, Mr. Long. We'll talk about it for a starter. No, we... Watch it, Ben. I got it. Yes. All right. Be smart. Be smart. Easy now. Okay, okay. Yeah. a boy. Oh. Uh, okay, Ben. I'll come with you, but I ain't done nothing. Yeah, for a man who hasn't done anything, you fight pretty hard. Okay, Ben? Yeah, he's yours. All right, come on. Now, wait a minute. You've got nothing yeah, on me. Yeah, You've got nothing on me. Ben. Huh? These look like bloodstains to you? Yeah. Better phone in. Tell him to let Brewer go. Starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger. Was written by E. Jack Newman with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Martha Tilton was featured as Beth Leonard. Others in the cast were High Everback, Peter Leeds, Victor Perrin, Howard McNear, Sidney Miller, and Virginia Gregg. The lineup is produced and directed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. The nation's forestry service reports critical forest fire conditions in the Midwest, the Far West, New England, and the South, with many other areas showing increasing danger compounded by an unprecedented number of hunters in timber areas. To all of you in or near timberland areas, these critical weeks take every precaution to avoid setting fires. Coverly speaking. And remember, you have a Thursday night date with Junior Miss on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>